Hi, my name is Ali Shesavar. I'm an academic at the University of Reading in the UK and over the next few minutes I would like to talk to you about what a real compensator on a real power supply looks and how we design one. This short video is aimed at engineering students and it's a small extract from Texas Instruments Webbench seminars. Please visit the website for full details about these seminars. Okay, so in the last few videos, we have discussed Bode plots, a stability, phase margin, gain margin, crossover frequency. We looked at the correlation between the crossover frequency and phase margin in frequency domain and, uh, and time domain. And ultimately, we have to build a compensator for our power supply in order to meet the stability criteria. TI's WebBench Power Designer tool is used to design real power supplies. A student can use WebBench to apply the theoretical material that they have studied, like control theory, to truly master power supply design. So, if I look at my slides over here, this is a type of thing that we would study in a textbook. This is a textbook power supply. Over here, I have got my power stage. Here, I've got the PWM, which is in fact part of the plant. And here, I have got my compensator. We study this in our power electronics classes, and we study the loop design in our control theory classes. The compensator is usually an, an, an op amp and it's internal into, uh, in the IC, and in fact, so is the PWM. So if I look at the compensator from a control theory point of view, i.e. before implementation from a textbook point of view, I have got here something that we call a type two compensator. You can see that we've got a transfer function, and within this transfer function, I have got two poles. Here is my first pole, it's a pole at origin. I've got my second pole, which I get to place in order to meet the stability criteria, and I have got a zero, and again, I get to place that where I want in order to meet the stability criteria. At school, we study the impact of poles and zeros in detail so that we can relate this into reality and design a compensator. We need to select the position of these poles and zeros in order to achieve the stability criteria. Then we need to calculate the component values, and these are usually related to the equations. And again, we will have studied this in many subjects at school. Uh, the component values are related to the position of the poles and zeros. And please note that these are, in fact, in radians. And of course, WebBench will design these automatically, place the poles and zeros automatically, and then calculate the components automatically. So here's a power supply that the WebBench would design for you, and we're going to compare that, the real power supply that WebBench has designed with the textbook version that we just saw with the poles and zeros and the equations that we analyze at university. So have a look at these components here. I have got a, I've got a capacitor here, another capacitor here, another resistor here, and I've got a potential divider pair of resistors over here, and I'm going to shortly show you how closely this matches with the textbook version that we study at school. So these feedback components are from the data sheet and we can have a look at what is inside of the chip and you'll find that it is the op amp and the comparator that we showed from the textbook version. So from the data sheet of this LM255117 device, I can see that I have got my PWM comparator and I have got my inverting op amp, and I have got these set of components. And you will see shortly that is exactly the same as the one that you study in your textbook. So WebBench Power Designer has designed for me a compensator and has connected it to these pins, and these pins correlate perfectly well to these feedback pin and the compensator pin of the data sheet. So this is the textbook version. And you can see that, in fact, these components are exactly the same as what I have got here in the one that we study in the textbook. So to take my textbook version of an op amp and bring it to reality, it's just a matter of having a look at these two circuits that, that WebBench has designed. We know the transfer function. We know the equations for poles and zeros. I have now converted them to hertz from radians. And we know the component values because WebBench have designed them for me. So given that I know the component values and I know the poles and zero equations, I can actually calculate the positions of my poles and zeros. I've got a pole at origin at 11.6 kilohertz. 
I have got a zero at 1.8 kilohertz, and I have got a second pole at 50 kilohertz. And these are based on the components that were calcul calculated by Webbench. Okay. So now that we know these values, and at school we have studied the impact of poles and zeros, we can plot the body plot. Again, I have used the recomp uh, function of, the, uh, of Webbench in order to plot the body plot of this compensator. And let's have a look whether this correlates well with the control theory stuff that we have studied at school. So first of all, I had a polar origin at 11 kilohertz, and you can see perfectly this fits absolutely perfectly with what we study in theory. I've got 90 degrees of phase lag because of my uh, polar origin. Then, for my equations of the previous slide, I know that I've got a zero at 1.8 kilohertz, and you can see that the gain plot starts to shallow, the slope of the gain plot starts to shallow at around 1.8, and of course you can see that the phase starts to rise. And of course, you've studied so many times at school the impact of a zero, which is a shallowing of the gain and the rise in the phase. So I've got my gain, my, my gain and my phase changing due to the impact of the zero. And then finally, we had a pole at 50 kilohertz. And of course, in the school we study that the gain will fall with a pole, and also the phase would fall with a pole. And you can see here the phase lag due to the pole, and you can see the gain fall due to the pole. So everything matches perfectly with our theoretical studies. But this is only an estimate, and we can simulate it in both time domain and frequency domain. And this is exactly what we will do during the hands-on seminars, whereby you actually get to see how you design a real power supply and apply these and, and get yourself something that is out of the textbook but fits perfectly with reality. In this short video, we have built on the material presented in the previous videos to show you a real compensator. We compared your textbook compensator with a real compensator designed by Webbench, and we saw that in fact they match very well. We also looked at the transfer function of the compensator and its poles and zeros, and then studied the impact of these on the body plot. Hopefully by now you're comfortable with the concept of designing in frequency domain and assessing a stability. To learn more, please join us in one of TI University program's many hands-on seminars. Thank you for watching, and for more information, please follow the link below. Thank you.